To the budget buster, U.N. funds slashed, foreign aid smashed, and Democrats blasting the White House for cuts they say go way too far, but some here say they don't go far enough. Hi, everybody. I'm David Asin. Welcome to Forbes on Fox. Let's go in focus to find out with Steve Forbes, Mike Ozanian, Elizabeth McDonald, Sabrina Schaefer, John Tamney, and Bruce Jackson. So, Steve, just this week, U.S. taxpayers, it was found out, helped fund another U.N. report bashing Israel. Is that money well spent? Obviously not, David. The U.N. has become a welfare agency for diplomats, dictators, and human rights abusers. And uh, the money, uh, most of it, goes to waste. They say they fight disease. If you want to have a good fight against disease, you go to something like the Gates Foundation. So in terms of uh, development, economic development, just be builds bureaucracies. So this is a badly needed house cleaning. It's just a beginning. And Bruce... Uh, it's a management nightmare. I mean, the, the, the place is run, the United Nations anyway, is run, run like a, a kindergarten. Kindergartens are actually better run than the United Nations is. <laughs> U.N. ambassador, U.S. ambassador to the U.N., Nikki Haley, spoke about this uh, late last week. Let's listen. Just with the bureaucracy at the U.N., you can trim a lot of fat, and everybody sees that. If it's not effective, we're going to call it out. So, Bruce, shouldn't we at least do that, trim the fat? Well, listen, I mean, I'm all for uh, trimming the fat, but I mean, when you have this White House that is engaged in its own bracket of March Madness here, you're going to have to con clone people like Nikki Haley to calm the, the diplomatic blunders of, of the president who keeps bringing up these crazy surveillance allegations and ticking off the British. And then, but also, they're, they're not talking with uh, the same voice here. You have Rex Tillerson saying, you want to cut diplomats, which is which is fine, but at the, meanwhile, the defense department wants to increase defense. So I don't know that this will pass the Senate. Well, uh, with the, but, the but John, the, the point is, is that it is it, a place like the UN is run terribly. They waste money, uh, and these cuts do the very least, I would think, to to try to tackle some of that. Yeah, I, I don't think they cut enough. In, in my perfect world, what they would have done is that they just wouldn't have appointed anyone to the UN, would have, which would have just withdrawn all legitimacy of it in the first place. But I think we've got to remember that all this spending on foreign aid, on protecting the free world, comes at the a major expense to our safety and the, and the health of the U.S. economy. These dollars would otherwise fund good ideas. They're not. They're funding awfulness. Well, and, and they're funding to the tune of a lot of money. It's about $8 billion, Sabrina, that the United States is paying for the UN, and that's a lot more than any other nation spends. Yeah, that's exactly right, David. I think there's a big difference between the UN, of course, which is sort of a perpetually corrupt organization, and the State Department here at home. For the UN, we have to remember that the United States is the number one supporter. We provide about a quarter of the funding, both in sort of general operating support as well as the peacekeeping efforts. So while I think Ambassador Haley made a good point that it's not going to be a sort of slash and burn approach, there is room for improvement, so to speak. And awesome. absolutely, the UN needs to, to sort of change its tune if it wants to see the United States continue. And Emac, there's so many examples of the horrendous management at a place like the United Nation. I mean, there's corruption galore there, right? Yeah, and you know, the UN Development Fund is routinely commandeered and taken by brutal regimes like North Korea, uh, also Venezuela, Zimbabwe, Burma, you name it. The, the, what's going on behind the scenes with the UN is this, about 128 com uh, countries there, they only give less than 1% of the budget, but they get to vote on the budget and how it's spent. So they have no skin in the game. These are major human rights abusers, no skin in the game, no accountability. So what do they care if they waste and US tax dollars? I, I just want, don't they have these extravagance expense accounts? They have their own chefs and yeah. things like that? Yeah, that happened at the State Department. There was a called a culinary diplomacy program where mm -hmm. about eight dozen or so so chefs were hired right. to cook for officials overseas, including foreign dignitaries. And Mike, that's really the point. We've lost sight of what our spending on the State Department and auxiliaries should be. It's about diplomacy. It's not about climate change. It's not about socialist land reform, which AID does a lot of in, in third world countries. It's not about the overseas private corporation fund, uh, which is going to be cut according to the Trump budget, which is just crony capitalism. Well, David, when you have taxpayers at your disposal, your budget can be almost whatever you want it to be, or your mission can be almost whatever you want it to be. And as we've seen with many government programs, they continue to grow. My biggest concern with what 
taxpayers in this country contribute towards the United Nation is when you need the UN the most, it fails. There's a genocide going on in the South Sudan. The UN has done nothing. There's been a genocide going on in the Middle East against Christians. The UN has done nothing. That's what really bothers me the it's most. True. But uh, Steve, again, the, the point is, is that diplomacy is the purpose of the State Department, uh, not all these auxiliary things that it gets involved in. Right. Climate change. I think the real climate change is needed in the State Department to focus on a real diplomacy, <laughs> not these extraneous activities. And, and in terms of economic development, David, time and time again, we've seen that the more money they throw in, the more they hurt the countries that receive the dough. Right. And Bruce, let's just focus on one thing. There's one thing that they want cut, the Trump administration wants cut, the Overseas Private Investment Corporation. Do we really need to spend our money on this? When the U.N. and the State Department has to go with, you know, when we have a situation like Ebola, okay, we helped the Nigerians build their health system. It was in our interest to prevent that from spreading. And so that's what we need, a line item here to go through and yeah, see. But, okay, but John, John Tamney, we're not talking about Ebola here. Yeah, if, if, if you can show me the few anecdotes where we actually help with the spending, I'll go for them. But I think we have to get back to Mike's basic point. We are talking about taxpayers. It is not the government's money. Every dollar spent on these ideas is a dollar that's not going to get to a future Apple or Microsoft such that it's going to expand our Bingo. lifestyles and, and our living. And you know what, bingo, that's the issue. You know, D.C. has been in bubble world because D.C. has <laughs> been a boom town off of our tax money. And when you take that money away from them, they have a fit right. because it's a loss of power. And Sabrina, the point is, this is the swamp that needs to be drained, right? It is, and I like it here, but it is a swamp. And you know, <laughs> Look, I think that the thing with the State Department, too, is that everyone's getting a little hysterical about it. We have been engaged in a lot of overseas um, conflicts that are now we are now sort of withdrawing from, which means that some of the funding is going away sort of naturally. We also, as you point out, it's not just some of the crony capitalism. It's things like cultural and education exchange programs. Right. Um, there's a lot of private groups out there who, who execute such things, and I don't think we necessarily need the government you know, playing a heavy hand there. And, Mike, it's very simple. It is our money. That's what Mick Mulvaney, the, the budget director, said this week. It's all about our money. Should the folks in, in Indiana or California or the coal miners in West Virginia, do they want to spend money for pizza franchises in Moscow? No, especially probably when they find out that Peyton Manning owns a lot of uh, Papa John's franchises. <laughs> I, 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 think, I think ultimately what this comes down to, what they're looking for, is accountability. In the private sector, with your budget, you have to be accountable for line items. That's what they're trying to get at here. Last word from Mike. Now, look who...